Hey guys, welcome to my first Q2 tutorial. In this video, I'm going to cover importing my profiles, as well as covering how to replace some of the features that we lost from Q1. So the first thing we want to do is make sure advanced mode is on. This is a program-wide feature that will disable simple profiles, but enables the use of advanced ones like mine. Unfortunately, this means that if you have simple profiles you want to use, you have to toggle this on and off when changing. To import a profile into Q2, we need to go to the profile drop-down menu. From here, select the two arrows that signify importing and exporting. This will change the bottom section to the importing and exporting window. We want to select import, then use the file browser to select the profile we want to import. In this case, I'll be using Burst Blue as an example. After selecting, click on the import button. Now I've already got it imported, so I'm just going to hit cancel instead. If this doesn't work, consider checking if you had the latest version of Q installed. To add an icon to your profiles, you'll need to have the profile you want to add the icon to active. Then go to the profile drop down menu and select edit profile. From here, you'll use the browse button to locate the image in your directory. Don't worry about there already being text here, that's simply where the image was located on my computer when I exported it. From there, hit save and you now have an icon that allows you to find your favourite profiles much easier. Switching between the profile or modes used to be much easier on Q1, but because of the removal of modes in Q2, unfortunately you have to add this functionality yourself. I'll cover cycling through a list of profiles first. I've set up a temporary macro on my M65 sniper key that repeatedly presses the left mouse button. You'll see why I'm using that in a second. First thing we want to do is go to one of the profiles in the group that we want to cycle through. I'll use the burst collection again as an example. Create a new action using the plus in the actions drop down menu. Select the key you want the action to be assigned to. Those that have followed my work for a while will know I usually use pause break for my profile scrolling, but it's completely up to you. If you have a K95, you could even set this to one of your macro keys. Now that we've set the key we want to use, let's change the action type using this drop down menu. Select profile switching and change it to switch to next profile from list, which is basically profile cycling. Now this is where the mouse macro is going to come in handy, as we have to clear everything out of the left list. This is the one that the action is going to select the next profile from. Once you have the left list clear, you can go back through the right list and pick out all the profiles you want to be cycled through. Reorder them however you like. Rename the action so it's easier to remember what it does when you need to look at a lot of actions later on. I'm going to move on now to direct profile selection. Once again, using Burst as an example, we're going to use direct profile selection to switch to the burst color picker profile. Create a new action and set the key you want to use it on. Change the type to profile switching, but this time we'll be using the direct profile selection switching mode. Use the list of profiles to select the one you want to directly switch to. In this case, we want to have the color picker profile selected and press save. As a side note, checking the box underneath is only going to switch the profile while the key is held. To easily duplicate this action to the other profiles in the group, we can add this action to the library. We can then switch to the other profiles and use this button to apply the action to the selected one. After adding an action from the library, you'll still need to set the key the action uses, as this information is not saved. We can now use this process to add direct profile selection to some of my switch profiles, such as the burst color picker or the overwatch hero picker. There are multiple profiles that are combined during conversion, especially the ones that use the same effects with minor changes. To use these, you have to go into the profile and turn these off and on manually. Most that have toggles will only have one or two, such as a toggle for both first person shooter and MOBA highlights. Circuit Breaker is a great example of a profile with more than a few. The Q1 version was split into 36 profiles, seven colors with five variants of each plus a color picker. In Q2, I combined everything into the one profile and scrapped the color picker. To add this functionality back, all you would have to do would be duplicate the original and toggle on and off the ones you actually wanted to use. You could also use the color picker profile from Burst to add back the functionality of that too. The last thing I want to address in this tutorial is sound effects. Some of my profiles in the past have come with sound effects that can be played by pressing a certain key. 
adding her sound effects in Q2 is very similar to adding them in Q1. The profiles with the actions in place only need to have the file located on your machine to work. If you want to create your own sound effect keys, here's the action settings you'll need to use to do it. For watching all the way to the end, I've included a zip file of backgrounds that have been designed for the Burst collection. You'll find that link in the video description. Hopefully this tutorial has been enough to help get you started using my profiles in Q2. If you liked it, please leave a like on the video and comment with any other questions you may have. Thanks for watching guys.